ratings, scoring and scoring models, uh, time allowances, et cetera. So today, Dobbs, uh, we're using the webinar format for this. Uh, so why don't you go ahead and do your, present you do your presentation. And uh, if anyone who's watching online has questions, uh, you can ask that using the Q&A function and we'll take those at the end. Uh, for those uh, here in the room, uh, we will also take questions uh, for Dobbs at the end and we'll, uh, we'll relay those to him. So with that, uh, take it away. Very good, thank you, Sam. Um, and thanks for that introduction. So I can roll right into this now that he's introduced me and who I am and the system I represent. Uh, the questions that we are gonna to attempt to answer today are the following here on the left side of the screen. You know, what is the organization? What are its resources? Uh, what are the principles involved with the organization? Uh, some other ORC benefits besides just certificates and ratings. And a little bit of a, uh, an overview of what changes are coming ahead uh, that you'll see on this year's certificates uh, compared to last year's. Um, first of all, as, uh, as Sam said, this is a, a large, well, it's now a large organization. It was founded over 50 years ago. It's not new. Maybe it's people haven't heard of it before, but uh, it's actually been around for a long time because it was set up to uh, be the first international rule system between what CCA was doing in this country and the uh, Royal Ocean Racing Club doing in the UK. Uh, with the formation of this organization, uh, the Offshore Racing Congress, uh, a new international rule system was developed. And those of us that have gray hair may remember it, it was called IOR. Um, subsequent to that, a, 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 let's say a better system, a more updated uh, scientific system called the IMS was developed and managed by ORC. And, and, uh, and now currently ORC continues in that mission. They just rebranded it as the ORC rating systems. Um, and as Sam said, we issue over 10,000 certificates in 45 countries. So we're uh, large and international uh, and thereby have um, uh, a lot of resources and experience to draw on from many different cultures. Um, I am the only native English speaker in this organization, which makes me a communication director. Uh, so I need to have both a technical grasp of what this is, as well as cultural nuances in the way we communicate. Uh, our, our base language is English. All of our rules are in English, but a lot of our staff are, are in countries like Italy and Croatia and uh, Greece and so forth. Um, and the basis of our system is something called a velocity prediction program, VPP. Uh, many of you will know this uh, because the previous system used was also based on a VPP. Uh, and, and basically, you know, it's, uh, well, here, we'll go to the next slide and we'll explain what that means. A VPP uh, is a sophisticated way of taking the, I don't know if you all can see my cursor, uh, we're, we're balancing forces. We're balancing drag forces from the hull, its appendages, the prop and so forth, anything in the water dragging along against the drive forces, which come from obviously the wind and the sails and what kind of forces they produce. Um, also a healing force balanced against a stability force. So it's a, it's a as I say, a fairly sophisticated program. Uh, we publish our VPP and, and you can actually buy it if you want to, uh, but we have documentation for it. And those that feel comfortable with partial differential equations can go right in. Uh, it's called VPP documentation. Uh, but, but it's actually not uh, too bad to read. It, it does explain um, uh, how we come up with uh, modeling the performance of a boat. Um, in the current ORC fleet, uh, this sort of scientific analysis in our VPP research uh, allows us to do uh, evaluate the VPP, how it's working. And what we use is our fleet of boats. And the fleet of boats is over 2,000 uh, of all the measured ORCI certificates. So we get quite a wide variety of boats to look at. Um, and our technical committee uh, tries its best to, to use the modeling to make fair ratings for everyone. So that's what VPP means. Um, basically, we're trying to model the performance of the boat across a range of, of uh, uh, wind conditions, wind speeds, and wind angles. Um, the resources we have to do that are our technical talent and our research budgets. We, uh, we have an international technical committee of over a dozen members, and we've just added to that with several new research associates who are uh, top players in their field, whether it's aerodynamics, um, hydrodynamics, 
yacht design, uh, some structure, we have some structural engineers uh, and all, all contribute to having meetings several times a year. We've got enough uh, money in our income and in our budgets to uh, fund research projects. So you do CFD studies that cost money. Um, and, uh, and then just our normal staffing. We've got eight people who are full-time and they're doing a variety of different functions. Uh, for me, it's communications and telling people like you how our system works. Uh, but there's also, uh, we have uh, people who are expert programmers on, on the uh, software, inter software infrastructure that allows the system to operate. Uh, we have uh, experts in, uh, in doing what are called offset files and looking at uh, how the three-dimensional shapes of the boats are modeled. Uh, we have expert measures. We have uh, uh, a guy who, who uh, works with rating officers in each of the countries that we operate in. Uh, so it's, and we also support uh, ORC championship events. So we have a world championships, uh, European championships. Someday, I hope we have North American championships um, in which the, the team uh, comes help support. And that's measurement, it's scoring, it's any technically oriented thing. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's a, it's a full service uh, operation. Um, we don't leave race organizers twisting in the wind, wondering what, what to do. Uh, we're there for support. Um, and so with that comes a lot of practical knowledge. Uh, it's not just, you know, that we're good at math. We understand uh, as sale, as racers ourselves, what the context is. Um, and, uh, and that becomes very important. There are cultural nuances for sure. The game is played differently in Europe than it is here, but we evolve with the tools that we, uh, we are uh, developing and, uh, and the goal being that everybody's happy. Everybody thinks this is fair and it works. Um, we also have kind of a parliamentary structure with committees and, and a protocol for feedback loops. Uh, we have an annual meeting. Uh, and these are, while it may sound kind of boring and bureaucratic, it's actually really important because with a system this large, we need to have established pathways to understand how it's working, how our customers feel it's working. Uh, this year, I would say with the um, inclusion of the MAC races and more, in more, uh, uh, let's say, buy-in from the guys in New England, you know, they, they participated in this process. There were eight submissions that came from the U.S. suggesting uh, improvement to the system, and that's, uh, we never had that many before. So, so it's good to see the U.S. Uh, participating in this international process. Uh, another big function we have are, are ed is education, and uh, we had a, a, a big measurement seminar just immediately before the lockdown. It was in March of 2020. And as more participation comes in the U.S., uh, we hope to help U.S. sailing in, in hosting and helping uh, uh, design these measurement seminars. All right, uh, next slide. I just threw this up because it's colorful. And, you know, it has a lot of pretty colors. What this is, uh, is actually an example of what the, our technical committee does. Um, here, they're... Here they're plotting on, if, if those of you haven't seen this before, this is a polar performance plot. So um, the radial coordinates are, uh, are boat speed, two, four, six, eight knots of wind. Uh, and the, um, the angular coordinates are true wind direction. So each of these curves can describe um, the, the performance curve of a boat sailing in, in these conditions. So this, uh, we call it, we actually uh, issue this as a product to, uh, to individual boat owners. Uh, those of you who got certificates last year, it should have come with a speed guide. So you, you may have looked at it and, uh, and you would have seen this. Now, what our technical committee does is plot on this uh, the uh, uh, optimizations and the angles and, and wind speeds in a certain condition for all the boats in our fleet. <laughs> So th this is a useful thing for them because they see, well, how close are we to getting to the curves that are predicted? Um, anyway, it's a, it's a long and involved process uh, and that's just one aspect of it. All right, our principles, um, transparency. We publish everything. We publish our certificates, we publish our rule, uh, we publish all of our protocols. Um, we even give uh, a guidance on how to do notices of race and sailing instructions. We also have this year a uh, race management guidebook that helps race committees understand how best to apply uh, our system and our scorings. Um, 
The other transparency is for you, the users. You can run test certificates on our website. So let's say you wanna see what the rating effect is of a larger spinnaker. If you have dimensions of that spinnaker, you can use your own uh, certificate as a base and then you can run a test in this system we call Sailor Services. It's a web-based web portal into the system. And at 15 bucks each, it's a pretty good investment if you're thinking about spending hundreds or thousands on a, on a change to your boat to, uh, to affect its performance. You can get a prediction with this system of what its effect on the rating will be, which is usually important to people. Um, uh, our transparency goes into our technical committee. Their minutes are, are published. They meet five times a year. Uh, they, they look at the science. They, there's no, um, you know, <laughs> there's no uh, uh, smoking room, uh, guys with cigars deciding what ratings are, unlike some rating system that you all know. Uh, we, um, everything's done scientifically uh, and it's documented. Uh, accuracy is important. Uh, we uh, really like to have uh, measures who know what they're doing and are following the protocols and are, uh, are good or accurate or they're precise and they're doing things properly. Um, I mentioned before, the, we have an inclusive system where through a submission process, we can get feedback to improve the system. And then just professionalism. Uh, we do have, as I said, a full-time staff. Um, I'm the only one <laughs> that's based here in the U.S. And uh, I am on East Coast time, but guess what? I seem to work 24 seven. I was up till one o'clock in the morning this morning getting a measurement done of a TP52 down here in Key West. Uh, so we, we, uh, we, our, our principles are, are to get the job done, do the best job we can. We, we're not the post office. We don't work nine to five, Monday to Fridays. We seem to work all the time. Um, so we're trying to be as responsive as we can. Uh, for those new to ORC, um, there's a couple of certificate options that you have. Uh, there's what's called a club certificate, which is where the owner fills an application out and the rating officer decides whether or not the information that's been provided is, is accurate or falls within the parameters of what they know of that particular boat type. Um, we have an online application with ORC. The U.S. Sailing has a slightly simpler application. Uh, we're, we're working through a process now with U.S. Sailing to, to uh, streamline that a little better. Um, and this, the source of information for that application could be your PHRF certificate. Um, and uh, th that's typical or builder specs or whatever, uh, whatever you think is appropriate. Um, the rating officer will likely tweak that to what they know about boats because you know, uh, what, what, what you come to find out is when you, particularly for big boats, is you have a certain boat type and you think you know what the dimensions are because you've seen it in the builder specs. Um, but it turns out that's not how the boat was built. <laughs> Uh, there can be huge variations in things like displacement uh, between known boat types, even some that have been marketed as one designs. Um, you all are probably familiar with J120s. Well, I, I know personally there's over a thousand pounds of displacement difference between measured J120s. They came in many variations and, uh, um, and uh, they're just, they vary hugely. So having a rating for a boat of that type um, is pretty unfair. Now, boats that want to sail the Chicago Mac or the Bayview Mac races, they often sail in sections that are uh, uh, preferred by the, uh, those sailors to be sailed as, as quote one design, meaning they're all sailing on the same rating. But I'll tell you, the guy that has the heaviest boat is at a disadvantage <laughs> within some of those, those boat classes. Um, so what does that do? That underscores the importance of measurement. Uh, so even for club certificates, if you can get even some baseline measurements uh, based on free boards and a calculation of the actual displacement rather than the published one, uh, you're usually gonna get some rating benefit from that. Um, sale measurements are, uh, are not negotiable. Uh, sale measurements uh, come, sorry, sale measurement data comes from sale makers who provide that data uh, and there are forms available um, on the website uh, where uh, your, your sailmaker needs to provide those. And that's for the mainsail, 
the largest head sole and the largest spinnaker. Um, uh, we absolutely need that information as a baseline of certainty for what the boat is. Um, for, uh, and again, the rating officer has a big hand in deciding uh, uh, what, uh, what, rate, what dimensions to give your boat for an ORC club certificate. Because in the absence of any certainty, the, the rating office has a, a better handle on uh, what the actual dimensions are for that boat type. Um, ORC international certificates, on the other hand, are those that, that require full measurement. So measurements of uh, the spar, uh, the boat itself, the boat itself has to have uh, a, <clears throat> we have to have an offset file, which means the, uh, the dimensions of the hull and the appendages uh, that are at a high quality, not estimates. Um, and the Chicago Mac race actually sets a limit, uh, a speed limit for boats that uh, are at the higher end of the speed range, and they're required to get ORCI certificates. Uh, some memos going around recently have said that they want to stick to the same uh, cutoff for that at 515 GPH. Um, we haven't issued 2022 certificates yet, and there's been small changes in the uh, in the VPP that have in turn caused changes in GPH and rating values, but the CYC technical guys, uh, I'm sure, will look at that and, and decide whether 515 is still the appropriate split. Uh, anybody that's faster than that needs an ORCI certificate. And uh, uh, unfortunately, you all have some good measures in that area who can uh, help with that. Um, it, it just gives a, a higher level of certainty that, uh, that the rating of the boat and how it's being scored is, is accurate. Um, we do have, for those that are in one design class trim, there's some 22, I think it is, um, uh, boat types that, uh, uh, that have baseline one design certificates. And that's again, uh, for a boat in class trim. So FAR 40s are among those, uh, FAR 30s, Melgus 24s, Melgus 32s, uh, they all have uh, one design class uh, certificate options that are of course only, only valid if your boat is in one design class trim. Um, we've also got in our portfolio, although maybe not used all the time uh, in the Mac race are double-handed certificates, uh, non-spinnaker certificates. Those are particular pop particularly popular for the uh, casual sailors, uh, evening sailors, um, you know, so the New York Yacht Club cruise, for example, does a lot of non-spinnaker. So they revert, the, those entries revert back and forth to a full crew uh, uh, standard certificate to a non-spinnaker for casual racing. Um, and we also have at the other end of the scale, super yacht certificate. So if you have a, a boat that's over 30 meters, um, <laughs> that's a hundred feet, um, maybe that's appropriate. There is a super yacht circuit of boats. And then new this year will be um, multi-hull certificates. Uh, we've been working on that for over three years now. Uh, we did some beta testing of that in the last, season, uh, last summer season um, in Europe. And I'm told by the group that's working on that, that uh, 2022 will be when we can first see that system rolling out for, uh, for use. Um, I'll, I'll answer what I'm sure might be questions from the multi-hull guys. Uh, you know, can these multi-hull certificates be used with racing with monohulls? And the answer is no, 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 no. And the reason is because the multi-hulls have a different VPP. They have a different way of calculating their, their speed potential. Um, all right, moving on. Um, this is what a uh, 2022 ORC certificate will look like. Um, I just ran this based on a beta version of our software that's uh, still being developed. But uh, what you can see is it looks very, uh, it looks almost identical to the 2021 certificates. There's a few small subtle changes, but um, principal features are a, you know, graphic of the boat and its sail plan that's drawn to scale. There's a lot of uh, rig information and sail information contained just in this graphic. So if you have any questions, you can look, look closely here basic parameters, displacement, draft, length, prop, propeller type, and so on. Crew weight is a variable that you can declare in your, uh, on your certificate um, rather than using the default. Uh, and that does have an effect on your rating. Um, a club certificate has a different coloring, uh, lighter blue. 
And again, these may have uh, measured data or, or more likely are, are based on estimates made by the rating office. One thing that is uh, common to both certificate types is here is a, is a table of values. It's a, basically a brief overview of what the performance of the boat is from six to 20 knots over uh, these ranges of wind angles. So from upwind VMG angles to uh, downwind VMG angles, and then all the reaching angles in between. So this gives a snapshot of what a speed guide would be to uh, describe the performance, in this case, of, uh, of Eagle. Uh, Sydney 38. Um, GPH value has now been changed. In fact, maybe I'll go back a slide. Um, everybody's kind of familiar with this term, GPH, general purpose handicap. And that's been traditionally uh, used, not necessarily to score races, but to give a general uh, idea of what the overall speed, performance speed of the boat is for performance uh, potential. And that's expressed in seconds per mile. Uh, we've made a change to a new term called APH, all-purpose handicap. Uh, it has a slightly different mix of, of wind conditions, um, wind uh, angle and wind speed conditions that was used to formulate the GPH. But we think in the long term, uh, APH will be something that will be a little bit more accurate than GPH. And what I'm struck by, just looking here at uh, Alice Martin's boat, the painkiller, uh, is what a big change there is between APH and GPH. Now, again, it has no bearing on how you're going to be scored because nobody really scores with this. It's used as a, as a generalized uh, handicap for race organizers to make their uh, decisions on where to make their class breaks. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, and again, th uh, th they're, and, and they don't have to use this, by the way. They can, they can go back to using GPH. We have both now in the certificate. So uh, just wanted to make mention of that. Uh, okay, that's the club certificate. Um, some other aspects of that is, uh, are, the, are here in the bottom of the first page, stability index. Um, now here, if you notice for Eagle, uh, it appears that there was not a, a, an inclination test done for this boat and therefore there's no measured stability index. Um, and there's a generalized writing moment that's used, but this, this is an important parameter for race organizers to gauge who's eligible to uh, race in offshore races like Mackinac uh, or others. Um, and that's, those, are, those rules are governed by the safety rules. The, the US has the uh, safety equipment rules, SERs. And they have three different categories, uh, inshore, coastal, and offshore, where they have stability index as a criteria. So uh, race organizers will be looking, looking at the compliance with that in this area. Okay. Uh, so what are your, what do you need to pay attention to when you're doing the Mac race? You know, here's a certificate with all these numbers and all this information. Uh, how do you know how you're being scored? Well, um, the club and its technical committee have devised three different options uh, in, in a model of what the conditions are from the start here up to the finish. Anybody that's done the race knows that you see nearly everything. Um, the challenge is with a VPP-based system is, well, how do you turn that into a, a rating? How do you turn that into a, a uh, performance uh, potential rating? And they've done that in, in these three broad categories. Uh, this is the up, mostly upwind uh, style of race, um, where you can see uh, in terms of wind angle, there's a higher percentage of, uh, uh, higher percentage of the boat's rating partitioned into these, into these upwind angles than the downwind angles. Uh, it's also, in order to compress this down to a single number, spread out uh, amongst wind speeds. So 6, 8, 10, 12, 16, 20 knots of wind. Um, this is the percentage mix for the mostly upwind. Similarly, an all-purpose, you know, it, it doesn't have as much upwind. It's it, uh, more balanced in the, in the upwind, downwind, and reaching angles. And then a mostly offwind uh, rating, 
where these percentages of angles are skewed more toward uh, uh, broad reaching and, and running angles. And so the organizers, as, as those that have done the race know, they, they choose which one of these that they'll use for the race. And I believe that's the, the day before the race because then they have a, an idea on the weather models that are ahead and uh, which of these three would be appropriate. So this is a really clever uh, way to uh, try to get as accurate a ratings for everybody as possible. It's not perfect, obviously. You'll have, uh, because of the spread of the, uh, of, of the boat speeds in the race, you know, the fast guys will get out and they may have totally different weather than guys that started before them, but are slower to progress up the race, uh, up, the, up the lake. Um, but this is a, a pretty good attempt at trying to model that and certainly better than a single number based on some generalized, uh, generalized notion like uh, APH or GPH. So um, uh, I asked the organizers if they anticipate any change in this for 2022 and, and they say no. They like these models and they'll continue to use them. All right. Um, and these are, this shows where that's found. On page two of every ORC certificate, either club or ORCI, are all the various rating options uh, that are found in, in, uh, in, uh, in the US. And this is a US only um, page. Uh, and it's on time on time. So upwind, all purpose and downwind. These are the time on time numbers. Now, how does that work? Well, your corrected time is simply these numbers multiplied by your elapsed time. And whoever, sale, whoever has the lowest corrected time wins the race. So higher numbers, uh, higher numbers here indicate faster, faster ratings. Um, okay, where's my cursor? There it is. Let's see if I can uh, advance this slide. Now, one clever thing that you can do uh, with our tools uh, is develop a scratch sheet, is develop a time allowance sheet between uh, you and everybody else in your section. And there's a way to do this online on the ORC website. Uh, it's a, it, it basically, um, uh, you go to the Sailor Services site, you find the boats in your class, you tick a box uh, for the boats in your class to be added to the online scratch sheet. And, uh, uh, and, and there's, this is all, you, you can walk, all, walk through all this when you get on the site. Uh, and it generates this thing as an HTML file which you can use uh, to do two things. One, you can edit the time, the elapsed time in these columns here at the head of these columns. And then uh, you can select your boat as, as the scratch boat and see what time allowances you have as a function of elapsed time on the race course uh, for boats that are slower than you. Um, so let's see. Oh, and this, <laughs> this is the class of ORC boats that are racing here in Key West next week. It's an enormous, uh, <laughs> you got everything from a J29 to a carbon fiber 44 foot race boat. It's a, a little bit of a broad class. Uh, but th this tool here gives uh, you as a competitor and also the race organizers a sense of uh, what the corrected time deltas will be after let's say 30 minutes of sailing. So if I were in the Grateful Red, which is a wing keel cruising CNC 121, um, I still owe Cool Breeze, this J29, uh, in 30 minutes of sailing, I owe him two minutes and 22 seconds. Or after an hour, I owe him four minutes and 45 seconds um, if I'm on the Chicago Mac all-purpose scoring model. So this is a clever tool that you can use uh, to gauge how you're doing relative to your class, both during the race and of course at the end. Um, okay, we'll move on. This is what I talked about earlier, the ORC speed guide. So for your boat, you can get a speed guide that, that, that charts out uh, your polar curves and the different colors represent different uh, headsels in your inventory or spinnakers. Uh, and, uh, and where they become effective and where their crossover values are for when you need to change sails based on a change in the wind speed and wind direction. Those are all listed. And so the color coding is here down at the bottom. We also uh, can offer uh, target speed 
speeds, and this is for upwind downwind sailing, uh, what your target apparent wind speed would be upwind and what its boat speed would be, uh, or going downwind, the true wind angle or the, uh, or the boat speed. So these are all uh, nice outputs and information you can get from a VPP based system. Uh, other changes for 2022 uh, are the result of better aerodynamic modeling for asymmetric spinnakers, um, a better model for double handed certificates uh, that is going to be more fair to them. Um, something that you don't see much in the U.S., but maybe if you were following the Volvo race or other offshore races, they use these, uh, uh, we call them whisker poles, but they're, they're given a variety of names. Uh, they're deployed to leeward on the leeward side, and they push the clue of the jib outboard. Uh, that gives a little bit more control on the twist off the back of the sail. It makes the headsail reaching uh, more efficient. And until recently, it's, it's actually kind of been illegal. We haven't been able to uh, find a way to make that legal in the, uh, in the racing rules of sailing or the equipment rules of sailing, but we're moving on anyway. And, and this year we've incorporated a model that can handle these things. Um, there's a better wind gradient model that doesn't give uh, boats with taller rigs a proportionally uh, proportionate advantage like, uh, like we'd seen in the past. We now have also um, a, a better workable model for cat rig boats. I don't know that you have many of them in Chicago, but there are several uh, over in the other lake and at Bayview uh, and in that area. And then, as I mentioned before, uh, a rollout soon for the, the new multi-hull system. Um, rating changes. So 2022 with a new VPP, uh, has affected different boats differently. Uh, this was when I looked through the list, because uh, I, I ran through the US fleet uh, to see what changes there were in the GPH. This is only GPH, it's not windward lured ratings, or I couldn't even look at Chicago ratings. This is just GPH. Um, and the entire fleet is, is more or less half a percent different, uh, so not big changes not big winners and losers. Uh, sleds, for example, from the couple that I looked at had, you know, very little change. TP52s, however, um, have gotten faster ratings, meaning they're, they're rated faster. They're not, uh, they won't say they're losers, but we're rating them faster than they, they were. Uh, J122, slightly more first, on the other hand, first 36.7s are rating slower. Um, and, and in, in, in corrected time or in rating terms, handicap terms, that means they're getting a little bit more favorably treated relative to the rest of the fleet. 105s are about uh, the same. Uh, Tartan 10s have become more competitive. So we don't just look at new boats, by the way. We look at the entire fleet. So we're looking at old boats and new boats and seeing how the science applies. J112Es are a little bit slower. They get a little better treated, whereas 125s are rating slightly faster. So 142s, very little change, far 40s, 111s. Uh, Melgus 32s, interestingly enough, are benefiting from this year's VPP, not by a lot, but a little, um, as well as you know, these older designs like J29s. So uh, when you apply the models to these boats um, and look at it with new science, it, it does have varied effects. There's no generalize everybody gets faster, everybody gets slower, it, it, it really varies, but, uh, but the changes are, are, are pretty small. Um, this is the, just a snapshot of the online portal, Sailor Services. Uh, this is accessible off the ORC website. It's a free registry to get to this. And with this, if you follow the prompts, there's a lot of different, uh, a lot of different things you can do based on the 145,000 measurement records that are in the database. Uh, so there's several different search criteria that you can use, uh, ways to do test certificates, scratch sheets, as I mentioned before, uh, and if you want to order speed guides and target speeds. So in conclusion, the overall goal is to have different boats uh, rate fairly against each other and therefore there's no uh, rating, you know, a dart throw of a rating uh, or handicap system to determine whether or not it's fair. It's, it's trying to be fair to everybody. So those that have sailed their boat the best 
and have uh, gotten everything out of the performance potential of the boat, those are the ones that, that we wanna see on the winter circle. Um, these are some resources. <clears throat> these are the, the links to where you can get sale certificate forms to give to your sale maker. Um, if you're a new applicant or if you're getting new sales that are you know, a new mainsail, a new largest Genoa or jib uh, or a new largest uh, uh, spinnaker that you want to uh, sub, you want to update your 2022 certificate from 2021. Um, those are the links for that. Now, I don't, we're working right now with US Sailing on devising um, a new process. So I'm not giving you a link to it because it doesn't exist yet. It's all it's all uh, in, in design now, and, and uh, we'll be working on that in the next couple of weeks. When will the 2022 certificates be available? Uh, we're targeting early to mid-February. So that's our, that's our target. Um, and we're just asking everybody to be uh, patient until then. And now I'm ready for questions. Sam. Okay. Just a second here. So we've got uh, a few questions that have come in in both the chat and uh, the Q&A. So the first one from the Q&A is, uh, how does ORC handle uh, code zero or code 65 sales? Measure them and declare them. That's how. Okay. Yeah. I think what people might be getting at with that though is that they're uh, they're included in the VPP. They're not quote free as they may have been in, in other. No, 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 no. That went away two years ago in ORC. Uh, yeah, they're not free. Um, they are required to be measured under our rules. So anything that's uh, less than 75% mid girth uh, is defined as a headsail. And uh, if it's set outside the head stay, it's called a headsail set flying. And we require the dimensions of those. If it's 75% uh, or greater, uh, those are spinnakers. Now we may call them code zeros. Uh, under our definition of the rules, they're still, uh, still defined as spinnakers, but if they are from 75 to 85% mid girth, uh, we, uh, we need to rate those as well. Okay. Uh, Brett asks if he has an ORC cert from last year, does do you need to get a new one this year, assuming no changes in his boat? No, <laughs> he's got to get a new one. Yes, because our VPP is different. The VPP every year improves. And so we are hopefully on a pathway towards getting better and better at handicapping boats that are different. And that's why we invest all we do in the science is uh, keep improving. So yes, uh, new certificates are required every year. Okay. Uh, can the VPP calculate performance for true wind speed less than six knots? Negative. Uh, okay. No way. Our technical committee gets asked that all the time, and the answer is no, because uh, the aerodynamic modeling and, and wind that light is not stable. It's not easily modeled. And uh, those of you that have sailed in those conditions know that. You know that you're just sailing from one little puff to the next. Race committees are reluctant to put courses out there that are less than six knots of wind because it's just simply not stable. And the same applies for over 20 knots of wind, by the way. And that's the opposite uh, problem where with that much wind, you're getting a lot of effect from wave action that, that frankly isn't modeled in our VPP and would be very, very difficult to model in any case. So we, we cap off at 20 knots. Okay, is there a conversion from uh, the previous rating system, which for us, uh, Mac race would be ORR? No, <laughs> different systems. There's no conversion. That being said though, the, uh, does someone need to necessarily need to get remeasured? Well, the measurements, if you have an, o, an ORR measured certificate, that's good for an ORC measured certificate. The, the measurement protocols are the same, yeah. nearly the same. Great, so they can resubmit the same measurements. Get... If they had a certificate from last year using those measurements, they simply renew. Okay. If they're new to the game, skip last year, only have an old ORR certificate, yes, those, those um, in 90% in of the cases, those uh, dimensions uh, can be used for ORC. Okay. And uh, you mentioned that the 2022 certs will be available in February. Uh, can we start the process now? And where do we start that process? 
uh, well as my last slide showed, we don't have a process yet. Uh, okay. Using the old process, you could, but frankly, give us a few weeks while we work with U.S. Sailing to get a, uh, a new and better process in place. Okay. And uh, we have another question that came in in the chat. Are new boats being designed specifically uh, to take advantage or make use of the ORC rules? You mean uh, rule beaters? Boats that are, have, a, have a, a, an advantage because, you know, they're designed to the rule? The answer is really no. Because if you go on the ORC website, look in the champions list and look at the boat types that have been winning uh, European and world championships, they're cruiser racers, they're racers, they're a huge variety of boat types. Now, having said that, can you optimize your rating for ORC? And the answer is, yeah, you probably can, but it depends on how uh, rigorously you want to define the kind of racing you're doing. Is it windward lured racing? Then yes, you don't need to focus on reaching sales and other aspects of the performance curve. But if you're doing something like the Chicago Mac race, I don't think there's any way you can optimize. I mean, people try, they will, they think they can. Uh, and those that want to spend the time and effort of running tests, they may feel like, yeah, if we go with a lower, you know, a, a smaller spinnaker, that's going to do this, that's going, I mean, but there's a lot of assumptions involved. Uh, and you really do need expert help if you're going to do that. So actually this afternoon, I had lunch with Greg Stewart. He makes his living doing stuff like that. Okay. Do we have any questions from anyone in the room? So with that, uh, Dobbs, maybe one more uh, kind of hypothetical question. We had sure. a session earlier today on uh, about people getting ready for their first MAC race. So let's say that we have a member of our uh, cruising fleet uh, here in Chicago that has a 40-something foot production cruising boat. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, and they're looking to do the race in our cruising division. What does the process look like for them? Exactly the same. Apply for club certificate. Give us your sale dimensions. And we go from there. All right. So real simple process. Hopefully. It's simple for some, more complex for others. Yep. Older boats that are cruising boats, they have a hard time finding, you know, when were, when were my sales measured? How do I get that info? Um, if so, then get started early. Go to go find either the, the whoever built your sales or take them to any sale maker and uh, get them measured. Okay. Great. So we really thank you uh, for your time today. We really appreciate it. Uh, this was a great overview and you, you know, you covered a lot of aspects of the, of the uh, rating system from the, you know, the very deep technical to the, you know, the simplest questions of, uh, you know, how do I get started? So uh, thanks very much for your time. And I'm sure that, uh, you know, we may be reaching out to you with some more questions as that, uh, as that new VPP uh, takes shape and gets published in yes. uh, hopefully in February. So Happy to help and uh, thank, thank you for the opportunity, Sam. Yep, thank you. And then for all of you listening online and those of you here in the room, uh, please join us next Saturday, the 22nd at 2 p.m. Uh, we will have a uh, session on covering the uh, changes to the Chicago Mackinac safety regulations, as well as a uh, life jacket clinic and gear expo from uh, Phil Pollard of Crowley's Yacht Yard. Thanks everyone and have a good afternoon.